Northeast 15 to 25 as Pittsburgh and Rutgers gets set to meet here in Pitt Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is the second time that these two teams have played. It's the first time that Rutgers has ever been here to Pitt Stadium. They played a year ago in Giant Stadium. Pitt won that game easily. So it's only the second game of this series. The crowd, not what they expected this afternoon. They were looking for about 50,000. They hold 56,000 here in Pitt Stadium. They will not get it this afternoon, basically, or because the weather is really pretty bad. There is the coach, Frank Burns of Rutgers, his 10th year. What an outstanding career he's had. He's a good coach, very much respected in the profession. The other side of the coin, Foch Fazio, 8-1 and one this year. And if you talk to people around here, it's like he's had a losing year. Normally, when you're 8-1, and one, John, you expect a raise, but uh, this is the year they expect to do it all. Rutgers is 5-5. Five and five. They opened by losing to Syracuse Penn State. Then they won three games in a row. Then Boston College lost, wins over Colgate Richmond. They have lost two in a row coming into this game. 5-5, five and five, hoping to avoid their second consecutive losing season. The kickoff will come from Eric Schubert. Joe Burke is the deep man, number 34. They scramble at the end line, but Burke has it. And he's going to be down short of the 15-yard line. Good coverage by the Pitt team that time. Making the tackle is John Lewis, who will be in the defensive secondary for Pitt this afternoon. Rutgers will have the ball, first and 10, at their own 14-yard line. The quarterback is Jack LaPrairie. Smith and Williams in the backfield with him. Baker and Johnson are the wide receivers. Along the line, Sella, Udovich, DeGilio, Owen, Spitzer, and Davenport. They often use three wide receivers. The Scarlet Knights with a 5-5 five and five record at the 14-yard line. First down 10. We are just underway at Pitt Stadium. They split the backs. And they send a man in motion. Trying to get outside. Right there is Al Wenglikowski, number 6, to make the tackle on Vernon Williams, a freshman from Amherst, Massachusetts, number 38. First carry of the ball game for him. He has a couple of touchdowns, only 151 yards rushing. Brooks, Pozzoli, Pelusi, Moss, and Wang Glikowski along the line. Five-man front. Linebackers, Cranack and Jones, who leads the team in tackles. Then Hill, John Lewis, Short, and Dukovic are the deep men for the University of Pittsburgh. The quarterback is a left-hander. Jack LaPrairie, his father, played for Rutgers back in the early 50s. They lost a yard on that first play. Second down, 11. A left-hander, he'll throw it downfield. Pass is overthrown at the 35-yard line, incomplete. Intended to Eric Johnson, his wide receiver. Coverage on the play by number 11, Rick Dukovic. John, normally uh, Rutgers wants to come out and run the football. They're going to have a tough time knocking Pittsburgh off the line of scrimmage. This defense has been outstanding. They had one breakdown this year against Notre Dame. Rutgers is going to have to throw it a bunch. That's something they really don't want to do, and they don't want to be in the position they're in now, third and long. That's not easy against the Panthers. Pitt defense giving up only 12 points a game, while well, their offense has been scoring at a rate of 26 points a game. Third down play, 14 minutes, 12 seconds remaining, first period. Again, they send the man in motion. That is Andrew Baker. They try to run it. Rich Cranack is right there, along with Al Wenglikowski to make the tackle. And the Pitt Panthers on the first series of hell. That's really no surprise. They've done it all year long. Williams not able to pick up any yardage, so we'll be in a punting situation. Another look, all they try and do is run sprint draw here. Look at the strength of the Pittsburgh people up front. And Cranick just steps up, sticks his nose in it, and uh, makes the play very easily. He's overlooked many times, doesn't get the publicity he deserves, but he's got great range and speed. Gary Liska will do the punting. The deep men are Williams and Jellick. Low snap from center, but he gets the kick off. Good field position for Pitt. Jellick will take it at the 45 to his left. He's dragged down from behind by number 56. That is Buchowski who made the tackle, number 56. But Pitt Irv with excellent field position. They set it up. Here's their offense. Marino, the quarterback. Thomas and McCall, the running backs. You see Danny coming into the huddle. Collins and Dawkins are the wide receivers. Great offensive line. Covert, Feta, Sweeney, Sam, Brown, and Wilson. Normally it's Bill Fralick on the right side, but he had a little problem with a pinched nerve. He is not starting this afternoon. Pitt at the 48 of Rutgers for their first possession of the afternoon. Fake to the tailback. Marino looks downfield. Looking for Dawkins, throws short, his pass is dropped and incomplete. Intended for Joe McCall coming out of the backfield. Sweeney is playing right tackle this afternoon. That means Anthony Magnelli is starting at center. So it is instead of Tony Brown, Jim Sweeney, who played some guard last week in Pitt's win over Army, has moved all the way out to tackle. That makes him a pretty versatile man to have. Uh, Washington, Hoffner, Hannes, Beschner, and Dumont up front. Then the brother, the other Dumont, Jim Dumont, is a linebacker with Wetzel. The deep men are Howard Young and Paglio back there, along with Young. 
It is second down 10. Ball at the 48 yard line. Marino going to pass it again. Looks over the middle, complete. That is Dwight Collins, who kind of held up and trailed across the middle. He caught the ball near the 41 yard line. It'll be short of a first down for the Panthers. They're going to the underneath stuff right now. Take another look as they use motion to clear it out and force man-on-man uh, -man coverage. Marino, the classic drop-back passer, 6'4". Look at the size of those Pittsburgh people. There's Collins underneath, favorite receiver, second all-time leading receiver. He has 38 receptions this year, four TDs. Another look. This is the game-breaker catching the ball. He's got 4'3 speed, and he can leap. Should go uh, extremely high his senior year. He's just a junior. We've got an injury on the field. That's Tim Dumont down. He's the man who made the tackle. He's one of the set of twins, the Dumont brothers from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Jim, number 53, is a junior, 6'1", 220 pounds. And he's a guy they count on really to get him fired up out there. Irv. Well, he's a Damon Runyon character. He's a walk-on who's made it big, kind of a wild man on the field who's really soft-spoken off the field. They can't afford to lose him. Something interesting before the ball game, John, a lot of people thought Pitt might come in very flat, looking ahead to Penn State, looking ahead for uh, a, a bowl bid and everything. As we take another look at the injury here, Dumont comes in, makes the tackle on Collins, and uh, apparently it's a left leg. And he looks like he just kind of got it bent back. But as we were talking, John, before the ballgame, they introduced all the Pitt seniors to the crowd. They faced our way, uh, and the, the people gave him a big hand, and it seemed to fire him up, and I think it was a very good move on Foge Fazio's part. There are 25 seniors on this team, a team that has been together and played very, very well for four years. As a matter of fact, this team has only lost. This group of seniors has only lost four games in four years. That's unbelievable. Frank Burns got a problem now because we have a backup linebacker Jim Martello is in there he is a senior Danny Marino is looking at third and three at the 41 12 53 to play first quarter Marino to throw for the third straight time it's complete to Joe McCall he's got a first down inside the 35 busted down inside the 30 to the 25 yard line Martello made the tackle big gainer for the Pitt Panthers John they overloaded to the slot side and through to the back coming out of the backfield flex the tight end on the other side it was just kind of a short little simple screen and McCall shows you excellent running ability gets out and lays it down pretty good. He had a big game a week ago against Army picked up about 130 yards to give him down to the 25 yard line a pickup of 16 yards on the pass play Pitts initial first down of the afternoon first and 10 at the 25 they split the backs. Now the tailback Thomas ships into the I formation. They give to Thomas off the right side. Down to about the 22 before he's run out of bounds. <laughs> and put to the deck on the far side. It was Bob Campaglio who ran him out. Fans didn't like it. I'll tell you what, up front, Pittsburgh has got some real men. Number 77, Ron Sams, just buried his opponent. He's 6'4", 270. Here's a guy who had turf toe all spring. They didn't know if he'd be able to get out and go, but boy, I'll tell you what, wasn't anything wrong with him there. John, that same guy had a hole in one the same day his father did. Now, how many times you have that happen? Not very often. Jim Dumont is back in the lineup. There are four sets of brothers on the Rutgers team, including two sets of twins. The Dumonts are the best known of the bunch. It is the second down seven. 12 21 to go. No score in the first period. Out of the eye formation, and he's dropped for a loss, making the tackle. Lionel Washington, who's had some knee problems, but he's a sophomore from Washington, D.C. Good size, 6'4". He's a big one. Let's watch him. Well, he really slants from that defensive end position. It was a misdirection play. Washington, the guy they call Big Train, obviously, really developed because of weight training. He's a devoted weight trainer. Just shows you what you can do if you're really interested. He was a high school basketball player. Always had that ability and agility, but he needed strength. Weight training has provided that. They go to the nickel defense, bring in Rich Wright for Rutgers. Five backs, third down 11 for Marino. Got a man open in the flat. McCall with it. Inside the 15, the 10-yard line, he's run out of bounds. McCall has another pit first down. Boy, they knew the pass was coming. They could, still couldn't stop it. Fake the reverse to Thomas, and then another underneath pattern. Boy, here's the uh, fake now as they do fake a little crossbuck action to Thomas, who will then help out and block. And then coming underneath to McCall, nobody around him. You can throw short against Rutgers. We're talking uh, to the people before the ball game. This has been their problem. They cushion a great deal. Marino, three out of four for 39 yards. And you can see McCall, who's been the big gainer. He had the 16-yarder a while ago. He picks up another 16 down to the 10. First down there. Thomas slips and falls as he gets inside the 10. Down to about the 8-yard line. Dumont was there on the tackle for Rutgers. 
We have 11 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first period. The clock is running. The Panthers, who started this drive on the 48-yard line of Rutgers, trying to move it in for the first score of the day. A little miss, a little problem on the snap. Well, Marino <laughs> finally gets a handle on it, but notice the Pittsburgh people up front doing a job. It's a power play, and they're able to pick up a little bit of yardage. On the sideline, there is Dumont. They're looking at his knee. Second down eight from the eight. Marino, quick pass. He's got a touchdown. The Pitt Panthers break on top. Touchdown number 23 in the career of that young man, Julius Dawkins. It is his seventh of this year. He is the all-time leader in touchdowns for a pass receiver. Here it is. Simple slant, six foot four inch. Dan Marino thrown to Dawkins, who was a great All-American in high school. And Dawkins and Collins are as good a duo as you can have. Pitt hopes to have John Brown back next week against Penn State. And then you really got three to throw to. So Dawkins gets the touchdown. It comes with 10.56 to play. Schubert, who's only missed one all year, knocks it through, and the Pitt Panthers have moved out on top. The extra point is good, so says the referee. 10 minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the first period. The Pitt Panthers have scored first. They take a 7-0 lead over Rutgers. We'll be back after this. The Davis Cup Finals are coming up here on your Total Sports Network, ESPN. It all starts on Friday, November the 26th, 8.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific Time. Remember, this is final round. This will be the singles matches. Then on Saturday the 27th, 9 o'clock in the East, 6 o'clock on the Pacific Coast, we'll have doubles action. Jim Simpson, Cliff Drysdale will be there. And it all winds up on Sunday, November the 28th, with those final singles matches, 8.30 a.m. in the East, 5.30 Pacific Time, live. Boy, the Davis Cup is at stake. That is the ultimate in tennis. That right. <laughs> the Panthers marched 48 yards. They scored with relative ease, just moved it right on down the field. Took them eight plays, and they took it in for the score. 10.56 to go. I tell you, the offense so far for Pitt, they've been on them all year. You can't ask for any more than what they just did, Or Well, they did a great job. One of the things that has hurt Pitt this year was the NFL strike because the talk shows have talked about nothing but college football, and uh, Pittsburgh's offense has been really scrutinized. Here's Burke at the two, the 10. A little bit of an opening as he gets outside across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Burke moved it out. Jellick had to come up and make the tackle. 31 yard line. Rutgers will have it for the second time. First series of the ball game for the Scarlet Knights. They were three and out. So we'll see what they can do this time as they set it up offensively. Here's the replay of the uh, run back. Pretty good one. Well, they've had problems with special teams all year long, but Burke does a good job as uh, he follows the wedge, and there's some good blocking up front. Almost breaks it until Jellick is able to move up and make the tackle. Looked like he had something going. So Rutgers with good field position. At the 31, first and 10, they split the backs, both wide receivers to the top of the screen. We mentioned they'll go with three wide receivers. Look at them stack it up on the left side of that line. No place at all for Vernon Williams. J.C. Pelusi, number 52, was through there in a hurry. Boy, you just can't move those guys out. Well, they are really big. Uh, Gillio, Green, Owens trying to block. Pelosi, who does take the uh, double team. There's the story on the scoring drive. Didn't take Pittsburgh very long. Pelosi's very strong. He's also very smart, an academic All-American. Pitt Panthers with several academic All-Americans. Pelosi with a 3.38 average in economics. Rob Feda, Greg Ganser, and Rick Dukovic. District 2 All-Americans academically. Again, they send the man in motion, the wide receiver. But Perry will look for him. He's running away from some pressure. Now he throws deep. He's got a man behind the pit secondary, but he's out of bounds. Can't hang on to the ball. That was the man in motion, Andrew Baker, the sophomore from Trenton, New Jersey. He actually got behind him because the safety started to come up a little bit, Irv. I think they thought the quarterback was going to take off. To me, that's the best chance that Rutgers has today. They're not going to knock Pitt off the line of scrimmage. The Prairie does have the ability to scramble, and when you scramble like that, unless the, uh, uh, the cornerbacks do remain deep and uh, the free safety, you have a tendency to come up, and uh, we've seen what Rutgers can do against West Virginia. They had a 76-yard scoring pass. There's Foge Fazio. Been a rugged year for a guy who is all Pittsburgh. He's a native. He's a solid guy, but he took over ball club. Everybody expected to go unblemished. They uh, had too tough a schedule, in my opinion. It is third down 11. LaPrairie has seven touchdown passes, also 14 interceptions this year. Oh, is he nailed. He is dropped by Dan Peep Short, number 29, a senior from Aliquippa, which is right here in the Pittsburgh area, playing his final game before the folks here on the campus in Oakland. Let's watch it again. Boy, he just came on that time. The safety blitz was there. They call him Peep because he used to peep around the corners. Here's a case where uh, his father really pushed him to his max. 
been a good football player and a very popular guy around town. It is fourth down and 20. Williams and Jellick will be deep to receive the kick of Gary Liska, number four. He's from New Canaan, Connecticut. He's just a sophomore, six feet even, 160 pounder. And once again, the Pitt Panthers are going to have good field position. A high kick, not real deep. Jellick, fair catch in Pitt territory at the 48-yard line. Well, for the second time in the ballgame, the Panthers from Pittsburgh will have excellent field position. We have nine minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It is Pitt 7, Rutgers nothing. We'll be back. Stay with us. First and 10 at the 48 for the Pitt Panthers, leading 7-0. This is their worst field position in two drives. Marino rolling, looks downfield, dumps it. Dawkins can't hang on. Inside the 45-yard line of Rutgers, he was hit. He could not hold on to the ball. Martello came up to make a little pop on him, along with Bob Dumont. Dumont's the other twin who's a walk-on as we get a look at the Rutgers uh, people giving some instruction. Here comes Pittsburgh up the line of scrimmage very quickly. They're audibling, John. Marino will do a lot of that. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. They had Thomas in the slot left. This time they go to McCall. He gets a block inside the 45 to 40. Down to the 33-yard line before he's dragged down from behind is Joe McCall. That's Keith Wetzel who caught up with him. But those short passes are working very, very well for Pitt. Well, they really are. They're clearing out with Collins and Dawkins. Dawkins dropped a crossing pattern a minute ago, but McCall's been very effective early. And Pitt is coming right back out. We're looking at the replay. Pitt's ready to go, though, as they're audibling again. Four of six, 58 yards for Dan Marino as he brings his team to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 at the 33. A 15-yard pickup by McCall. He's had two 16-yarders also. Out of the eye formation, Brian Thomas inside the 30. Down to about the 29-yard line. Ball pops loose, but the officials rule he was down. Bob Dumont made the tackle along with Jim Martello. Thomas, the tailback, has done a good job this year for Pitt coming into this ball game leading receiver and leading rusher misdirection pull both the guard and the tackle Washington made a big play the time before this time it picks up some yardage McCall now with three receptions for 51 yards altogether this is really interesting with the no huddle Marino looks down the field the ball is deflected and it's still caught by the man they call BT Brian Thomas at the 25 yard line Gain of about four. They will have a third down and two coming up. Randy Hannes, number 94, the nose guard, tipped the ball, and Keith Wetzel was there to make the tackle. Here it is. Quickly, once again, Hannes, who uh, got the start today when uh, Hurdle could not go, tips the ball, but Thomas is right there. Pittsburgh's ready to go again as they're audibling from the line of scrimmage. Third and a couple for the University of Pittsburgh. Here comes Thomas trying to pick up that first down. He may not have gotten there. Good defensive play and a good charge that time. Bob Dumont, you saw him leading the way, number 35, along with Jim Martello. Martello, who's been playing for Jim Dumont, he came up to force the play. Fourth down, the Panthers will go. Bobby Dumont had an outstanding game against Syracuse. I like his size and his speed. Here's a regular in the weight room. Once again, the value of weight training. Pittsburgh will huddle this time. John, they ran six plays without a huddle to take the football down there. It's a big play right now for Rutgers. They need to stop Pittsburgh to have a shot. Of course, Dumont had a big play just a moment ago. They go to the double tight end. Clint Wilson joined by Mike Meehan now. Two tight ends. In the eye formation, Marino sees something he does not like. He calls time with 6.56 to play. His team is leading 7-0, but they're looking at a fourth and one. I know the one thing they want to do, they have to get this team ready for Penn State. They have to win the game, obviously, or the bowl season is a problem. But they want to get ready for Penn State, and we'll talk more about how they're doing that when we come back. With 6.56 to go, it's Pitt on top of Rutgers, 7-0. We'll have more in a minute. Here on ESPN, we have more live boxing for you on Thursday, November the 25th. That is Thanksgiving, 9 o'clock in the East, 6 p.m. Pacific time, live from the showboat in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope you'll be here. Freddie Roach, Danny Cruz, one of the top bouts on top-ranked boxing. The Pitt Panthers have moved out to a 7-0 lead here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. You are getting a shot of the Cathedral of Learning on the campus. And not far from the downtown area. This is the Oakland section of Pittsburgh. You can see the official placing the ball at the 24. And the Panthers on fourth down one will try to pick it up. Jimbo Covert, an All-American, talking to his quarterback, Dan Marino, number 13. Out of the eye formation, the double tight end. Fourth and one. Marino fakes the running play. 
Look at the time he's got. The pass is caught inside the 20 at the 18-yard line, picking it up for Pitt. It was Mike Meehan, the tight end, a sophomore from Flossmoor, Illinois. Meehan in the double tight end formation became a receiver. Look at the time Marino has. Well, they just do a job up front with Covert, Feta, Sweeney, Brown filling in for Frelick, and they can just do it. Fourth and one. Great confidence in their passing game. They pick it up. Clock running now. Six minutes and 40 seconds to play. Marino, seven of nine for 75 yards. Right up the middle. Brian Thomas inside the 15. Quick opener that time. Keith Wetzel coming up to stop it for Rutgers. Let's take another look. Wetzel's intelligent. He calls the defensive signals kind of their inspirational leader, and he's able to just get a little piece, but he gets the job done as he flies through the air to make the play after a very short game. So it's second down and about six. And, John, this is where Pittsburgh has had some problems. We uh, get a look at some of the people on the sideline for Rutgers. They've had problems knocking it in. Frank Burns knows that, that they like to run the, uh, throw the football down here. Ball just inside the 15. It's a fake. Marino. All alone is Joe McCall at the five. Will he get in? He does. Joe McCall, who had a great game running for Pittsburgh last week against Army, has turned into a receiver this afternoon. McCall took that one, then just bowled his way into the end zone, knocking Campaglio back to take it in for six. Here they go with another crossing pattern. Play action, fake the reverse. We saw it to the other side earlier in the ballgame. McCall is wide open as Collins and Dawkins clear it out. And he shows you some good running. He knows where the goal line is. And Pittsburgh is up 13 to nothing. Eric Schubert will be on to do the kicking. He's 28 of 29 in point afters this year. Rather, 29 out of 30, counting the first one today. Danny Daniels, the holder. Anthony Magnelli is the snapper. And with 5.51 to play still in the first quarter, Pritt looks pretty good. They've had the ball twice, and they've scored twice. It is 14 to nothing. Let's take another look at the touchdown play. The Panthers bringing it up and putting it on the board the easy way. This is Thomas after uh, carrying out the fake on the cross, Buck. Marino, the big senior who's uh, 41 and four in four years, finds McCall, who's played outstanding this year. McCall lurches over the goal line, and with 5.51 remaining in the first period, Rutgers is very much concerned. Frank Burns, ball club down 14 to nothing. And for Danny Marino with two touchdown passes this afternoon, he now has 16 touchdown passes on the year. His problem has been interceptions. He has 21. And his problem has been confidence. I don't see any difference in Dan Marino than I've seen the last three years. Just a matter of uh, really believing the guy's got all the tools that you want. Not a bad baseball player either. He was the fourth round pick of the Kansas City Royals out of high school. This afternoon, he's eight out of 10 for 89 yards. He's thrown two touchdown passes. The first one was eight yards. This one was 14. And on the sidelines, Jack LaPrairie talking it over with the offensive coordinator to see exactly what Rutgers can do. When you get behind 14 zip to a team like Pitt, you're really in deep trouble then. Well, it is tough because they are out man and they, they needed Pittsburgh to drop it. And thus far, Pittsburgh's been perfect. And that time, Eric Schubert, who does such an excellent job on kickoffs, caught all of that one. The fact that Burke had been able to return the first two is very unusual because that's only happened 15 times out of something like 47 kickoffs this year. So he got all of that one, so Rutgers will have the ball at the 20-yard line. It took him three minutes and 22 seconds this time. Again, eight plays, same number as in the first drive. They marched 52 yards to score. So Rutgers' third possession of the ball game. They are yet to pick up a first down. They have a new center. Joe Rafferty is in there. They'll run out of the I formation. Man in motion, the wide receiver. That ball is deflected and intercepted. The Pittsburgh Panthers have come up with it. That is Charles Yogi Jones. Boy, did he do a good job. You talk about the tip drill. He knocked the ball in the air, then picked off the interception. And so Yogi Jones, who is the leading tackler for Pitt, gets the interception. The Panthers are knocking at the door again. Oh, you saw him come off the field. He's got that great attitude. Here he sticks a big paw up, goes over and gets it himself. And Jones is an avid photographer and a hard worker. Here's the same guy, John, who missed the 81 season, the majority of it, with that uh, bad wrist. And he had some surgery. He can play. He had 17 tackles against Illinois and West Virginia. Yogi Jones just picked off a pass, the senior from Denora, Pennsylvania. The Panthers at the 16-yard line, first and 10, still 5.44 to play in the first quarter. Straight ahead running. The fullback, Marlon McIntyre, in the lineup right now. He's a sophomore. He's from Pricedale, Pennsylvania. McIntyre on. 
He moves the ball inside the 15, got down to about the 12 yard line. A gain of four, second down six. What are you going to do, eh? I think the coach, Buck Franklin, will try and knock second it in down. on the ground and get some confidence this way. They have proven they can throw short anytime they want to. Good numbers so far for Danny Marino. Lone setback is the fullback. Thomas in the pass pattern. There's the throw just out of the reach of the tight end, but they are going to call interference. That is Clint Wilson, number 84. You see it, saw him diving for the ball. Let's watch it again. Rich Wright is the man who hit him. Well, Wright tripped him as uh, Fazio does not go on the ground, throws, and Marino puts it right on the fingertips, but uh, the pass interference call takes over right here, so Pittsburgh is putting this thing away very early. Here's the holding call against Rutgers. They'll decline that. <laughs> and according to the referee Raymond Bauer, they will accept the interference call. The Panthers will go to the double tight. They'll have the ball. First down and goal. At the goal line. About as close as you can possibly get, huh, Irv? <laughs> Well, they've really come out smoking. You know, we had a look at that Rutgers sideline, and it's just been very difficult for them because Pittsburgh is right. I really believe introducing those seniors early because people are worried about them being flat. Boy, they don't show that at all. Still five minutes and five seconds to play. They shift in the backfield, and that brings everybody forward. If you're Rutgers, you've got to gamble at this point. You've got nothing to lose. Penalty is going to go against Pitt, so they'll move it back five yards. It'll come outside the five. 14 nothing is the score. The Panthers marching for two quick touchdowns, then getting the turnover. It's the kind of day as a coach you hate to see, Irv, because when you make turnovers against a team like Pitt, you're just going to get yourself buried. You really are in serious trouble. Everything has to go right when you play a powerhouse like this. Physically, Pitt is as good as there is in the country. At the five now. Rutgers does not have a first down. The Panthers have seven. Let's see if they try to punch it in from the tailback. Thomas dives down to about the two. Stopped by the right side of that defensive line. Beshner is in there along with Hannes, Bob Dumont, Brian Thomas, the BT Express. Thomas has four touchdowns on the ground, one through the air, and he tries to squeeze it in there. Come out and robust to the power eye, and they use motion and try and run behind the All-American Jimbo Covert and Rod Feta. Rutgers made a pretty good pile out there and did a decent job. Paul Dunn has come into the lineup replacing Rob Fader. Fader's had a little bit of a problem. He's been on the injured list. He was slowed a little bit last week at Army. Fader's problem is an ankle. As you look at Danny Marino, the senior quarterback. Marino, 6'4", 215. Brian Thomas got plenty of blocking. He takes it in. The Panthers have scored again. Boy, they run that power right. And there are all kinds of blue shirts out in front of Brian Thomas. He scores for the fifth time this year on the ground. 419 to play in the first quarter. And Pitt has stretched that lead to 20 nothing. McIntyre and Collins out of the power eye are able to uh, pick up the key blocks here as Thomas finds that seam and is able to get in easily with 419 remaining. Goes up and over plays paratrooper. They did a good job of blocking down too on the right side with Tony Brown and the tight end Clint Wilson. And we'll see if Eric Schubert can put point after number three through there he does the Pitt Panthers are really prowling right now Schubert with three extra points already in the game we still have four minutes and 19 seconds to play in the first quarter and here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh as you look out over the stadium it is 21 to nothing the Panthers are out on top I'm not really surprised but yet in a way I am because last week against Army a game that I happened to see they did not show that intensity that spark that ability to to put it in when they had the chance today they're making no mistake about it well and you make a great point too John because Rutgers really played West Virginia tough for a half and then superior numbers took over but today Pitt has just come out smoking you know a lot of people thought that uh, coach Fazio would not show a great deal with Penn State coming up but Marino's been throwing the ball from minute one they went with no huddle the backs have run extremely hard and of course uh, up front they, they're just very big talk about showing things we really kind of expected uh, Pitt to keep the wraps on and they might when they get up like 21 nothing as they are now they might slow it down a little bit and not try to show everything they've got to Penn State because you know the Nittany Lions scouts are here well you know we talked about it early too this is such an important goal for Pittsburgh uh, specifically as we uh, mentioned 1.8 million to go to the Cotton Bowl they don't win today they're not going anywhere and they do have a shot at the national championship beat Rutgers beat Penn State and if things work out New Year's Day who knows 
has just kicked it out of sight. Down into the high jump area. He must have kicked that ball about 70 yards. Which has got the wind behind him and it's rather strong. 15 to 25. And if you're Frank Burns looking at your second consecutive losing season, it's a little bit dreary. Of course, Burns has had great success at uh, Rutgers. It only took a minute and 25 seconds for the Panthers to punch it in after the interception by Yogi Jones. Three plays, 16 yards. Brian Thomas gets the touchdown. 21 nothing. The Panthers are really rolling now. So for the fourth time in the game, Rutgers will have it. They have not picked up a first down, and they've turned the ball over once. At the 20, this time they run it straight ahead. Not much there. You saw Rich Cranach, number 55, moving up. In on that tackle, Foge Fazio pacing the sidelines, along with Danny Marino, his quarterback. Dave Pizzoli, number 63, was the first man three. He's really the one that stopped okay, it for the University three. of Pittsburgh. And you can see what they've done. They are fifth in total defense in the country. This defensive unit is really what has kept them going this year. Well, everybody talked about the offense uh, before the season, and the defense has produced that eight and one year. The offense has had their problems. People are hoping around here that they'll come around for Penn State and the Bulls. The Ferry is the quarterback. Burke is in the lineup. That is Williams. He is hit. He gets back to about the line of scrimmage. J.C. Pelusi breaking through there, number 52 to make the tackle. Bill Moss, number 71, also there. You can see Al Wenglikowski, number six. Rutgers, no gain at all. Let's look at them, stuff them right here. Well, you can see who owns the line of scrimmage. It is Pittsburgh. They're just bigger and stronger. Elio and Grant trying to fire out and double up on J.C. Pelosi, and that's what you want. You want that nose guard to take on the double team so Kranich and Yogi Jones can operate. Lucy's been very good all year long. Williams has carried the ball five times now for Rutgers, and he has four yards. It is third and five. Two minutes, 58 seconds to play in the first quarter. But Prairie looking to pass. Here comes the blitz. They've got him. Back at the 15-yard line. The Panthers were coming. John Lewis, the right side cornerback, came in to make the tackle. So the Panthers have been a busy group of players, I'll tell you. Look at the attack up the middle by J.C. Pelusi. I'll tell you, they're very aggressive today, and it's, it's just been all Pittsburgh. Rutgers needs a break. Take another look at Lewis coming very hard. And Short kick gets a Rutgers bounce. Running it away for running away from the ball is Keith Williams at the 45-yard line. So again, Pitt with outstanding field position. They've had the ball. This is the fourth time they've had it at the Rutgers 48, their own 48, the Rutgers 16, and now their own 45. You give a team like Pitt that kind of field position, and you can see the result. 21-0 still. Two minutes and 18 seconds to play in the first quarter. Pitt looks pretty good so far. Yeah, they really do. They've just they've dominated, and Frank... Uh, was pretty honest as we take a look at uh, Yogi Jones and uh, quite frankly Frank Burns mentioned it. his ball club has had some problems this year executing Barry Compton is on the field now he's split to the bottom of the screen you see him there he's the short man Julius Dawkins is still in there he's put way left Joe McCall running out of the tailback spot McCall breaks it inside the 45 down to the 42 yard line Joe McCall who has been running out of both halfback and tailback that time he was in the tailback spot Keith Wetzel caught up with him, but another big game. 303 yards coming into this ball game. It's just your straight power play, and he just picks his hole. Get some people rolling at uh, folks' feet up front. That's good running. He squares those shoulders up to the line of scrimmage very early and runs north and south. And for Foge Fazio, he picks up another 14 yards. Ball at the 41, just outside the 41. First down 10 for Pitt. McCall shifting into the I formation behind McIntyre, the fullback. This is McIntyre. Dives across the 40. Down near the 37-yard line. Again, Keith Wetzel, number 92 there for Rutgers. Wetzel is a senior. He's from uh, Waldwick, New Jersey, along with Jim Martello, another senior. Martello had to come on when Jim Dumont went down with a knee problem. Ten seasons of football, a great record for Frank Burns. 75, 34, and 1. And as we mentioned, in 76, his team was undefeated. One stretch, they won 18 games in a row. So they've had success at Rutgers, going to the bowl game. John, you know, he played there. He's coached there. He had a heart attack in 77. He's been a winner, 75%. It is second down about six for the University of Pittsburgh. Here comes McCall. Trying to turn it upfield. He will not be able to do it. He's wrapped up by Jim Martello, number 51. Martello gets him back near the 40-yard line. Call it the 39, a loss of a cup, but it'll be third down and eight for Pitt. 
Good job of staying at home by Martello. As Pittsburgh has been faking this and throwing the football quite a bit. This time they come out, they uh, pull a guard to get the job done. This is Magnell. Actually, they pull the uh, center, Magnelli. And it's just a good effort. Martello stays at home. Third down eight, only 29 seconds to play. The wide receivers now are Collins and Compton and Dawkins. They have three wide outs in the ballgame right now for Pitt. Passing play. Marino, lots of time, goes deep. He's got Collins in the end zone. No good. The official said he was out of the end zone. Right at the back of the line, Dwight Collins came down with it. Rich Wright was with him. They came within a hair of scoring another touchdown. Kind of unusual because Rutgers really does cushion a great deal. They don't give up the long one. They've, uh, Collins, as you see, is limping. Normally, they'll uh, let you catch the football, but in this case, just uh, a little overthrown by Marino, and Collins makes a catch, but he's over the end line. Well, the Panthers will go into the punt formation on fourth down. Rutgers really doesn't have a deep man. Tony Reccia is the kicker, not Greg Ganser. This is Tony Reccia. He's only kicked twice this year. He's averaging about 45 yards a kick. Took over a couple of weeks ago as the number one putter for the University of Pittsburgh. He knocks that one into the end zone. Seven seconds still left on the clock. Collins took a pretty good shot when he fell down there, Irv, and I think he may have hurt himself a little bit. Well, it's the last thing that uh, Coach Fazio wants to happen because they're out in front 21 to nothing. I'm sure that they do have Penn State on the mind. This ballgame has a long way to go, but from what we've seen early, you know, they just are totally dominating, and you can't afford to have an injury to a guy like Collins. Keeps you from doubling up when you have Collins and Dawkins. You get John Brown back at the tight end, and you really got something going. Fifth possession of the first period for Rutgers. Only seven seconds remaining. They'll run out of the eye. They do not have a first down. Takes to the tailback. Here comes the reverse to the wide receiver, Andrew Baker, to the 25, across the 30, run out of bounds. A number 29 Dan short and they do finally have a first down as the first quarter comes to an end. We have finished 15 minutes of play Pitt dominating so far leading Rutgers 21 to nothing second quarter action coming up on ESPN. Heading for its championship game and we hope you'll join us here on your total sports network on Sunday November the 28th 1 o'clock Eastern time 10 o'clock out on the West Coast for the Grey Cup championship spread white. And Paul McGuire will be there to bring you all of the action on the Grey Cup Championships. So ESPN is your ticket for great football action. And that's really just the beginning because the bowl games are coming up. Plenty of football yet to go here on ESPN. And of course, an outstanding basketball lineup. 14 yards on that running play. The reverse to Andrew Baker. Took it out to the 34. It'll be first down 10 for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. A team that came into the ball game averaging 17 and a half points a game. A better running team, Herb, as you mentioned, than a passing team, averaging 168 yards on the ground, only 150 through the air. Moore and Smith are the deep men. Bang down. He gets across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Number 33, Albert Smith. He's a freshman. Pull the guard that time, John. John Owens and two misdirection plays in a row look good because Pittsburgh pursues pretty good. Owens and Lamont Green, the other guard, do a pretty good job up front. The tackles are Tony Sella and Rich Spitzer. The pros like Sella. He's got the good size, needs to lift weights. Spitzer's pretty reliable. As we talked, John, they do want to run the football. And it's just so tough against Pittsburgh. The Prairie's got to throw it. Second and eight at the 36-yard line. Update on Jim Dumont in just a minute as Baker goes in motion. LaPrairie looks downfield. Again, they're getting pressure, and again, they've got him. He goes down. That's Al Wenglikowski, number six on top of him. He slams it to the turf all the way back at the 26-yard line. The update on Dumont is that he has a knee injury, will not play again for Rutgers this afternoon. That's a tough break. Smith is unable to handle Wenglikowski right there. And Al just comes in and gets the chores done pretty good. He's 6'1", 217, had ankle surgery in 81. Very strong and physical, and interestingly enough, he was a defensive back earlier in his career. Has moved up front, and that's what you want in the 50 defense, ends that are very active and agile. The Prairie has been sacked three times. He has lost 30 yards, lost 10 on that play. It's third down, 18. Prairie with no choice other than to try to put it in the air. Now he'll run. Wenglikowski's got him across the 30 to 32 yard line. 
13-19 to play in the first half, and the Panthers are going to get the football back. I do like that, though, when LaPrairie gets out and goes, found a seam as they lose their lanes now rushing the passer. Here's Jack. Gets a little better each ball game. He's going against a pretty good outfit today, but the guy is active. Problem when you scramble like that, they got a chance to crunch you, but that's really the only shot that Rutgers has is for LaPrairie to scramble in that open field. Liska will kick it. He'll get the kickoff from about his own 20-yard line. Williams and Jellick are deep for the University of Pittsburgh. 21 nothing. the Panthers on top. Good kick this time. Back at the 26-yard line, Jellick, a quarterback by trade, is nailed as he gets to about the 30-yard line, maybe just short of the 30. The Pitt Panthers will have it. Wuchowski made the tackle along with Dumont. They double-teamed him. The Rutgers has already lost one of their top defensive players here this afternoon. And the team is down 21 nothing, and you can see a little problem with the fingers. One of the Rutgers players being administered to. Meanwhile, the Pitt Panther fans are enjoying life here in the, a rather gloomy Pitt Stadium this afternoon where it is rainy, it is windy. It's rather, it's just basically miserable, Irv, is what it is. <laughs> it really is, and there, there's not a big crowd, as you pointed out, very early because of the weather. 12.43 remaining, Pittsburgh 21, Rutgers nothing, and the Panthers have the football again. Danny Marino is still in the ball game. Here's a penalty against the Panthers. 15 for holding, I believe, is what we'll get. Our officials today, John, we've got uh, Raymond Bauer, the referee, his crew, Robert Aversol, Earl Birdie, George Marcosia, Walt Malinchek, Weldon Waits, and John Joyce. Ah, oh, you did great on those names. Well, I remember some of those bandits. <laughs> remember them well. 15-yard <laughs> line. This is the worst field position that Pitt has had this afternoon. Look at the stats in the first quarter. Rutgers with no yardage at all on the ground or in the air and a minus one on the ground. So you can see that Pitt has really dominated. Now Rutgers is going to try to stop him right here. Marino quick toss. Thomas, 25-yard line, spins his way to about the 27-yard line. He's got a first down. Martello made the tackle for Rutgers, but it's a first down for Pitt. And all he did is audible when the uh, defensive end, who was in a fall-off position, came right back up to the line of scrimmage. Marino picked it up, just hit his man in the slot, Thomas, for a first down. And Brian did a good job as he spins for a couple of extra yards. He got to the 28. A pickup of 13 yards on the play. 12 minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first half. Lone setback. Has the ball, Joe McCall. Strips a couple of tackles. Good running by McCall as he gets out to the 35. Seven yards on the play, and McCall did a lot of that on his own. Yeah, he really did because they had him locked up twice. Bobby Dumont finally puts him down, but here's McCall. Breaks a couple of tackles. Runs hard and doesn't go down. Can't arm tackle this guy. There's two, one, two, three, and finally Dumont is able to make the tackles. Marlon McIntyre now is in at fullback for the University of Pittsburgh. And there is a backup quarterback getting ready. Number 10, Eric Hochberg. It is second down for the Pitt Panthers, about three yards to go. A long three, actually. Because the ball was really closer to the 29-yard line than the 28. So call it about three and a half. We're going to get a new football. It's very, very wet. Temperature around 50 degrees. Now, it was supposed to be near 60 this afternoon here in Pittsburgh, but Irv, I don't think we're going to make it. <laughs> Your town, John, you told me is going to be sunshine and 70. Oh, what the heck. Yeah, well, that's what I always tell you when you come here. <laughs> 11 minutes and 36 seconds to go. Thomas spins. It's out to the 40-yard line. He's got a first down. Bob Dumont, number 35, a junior from Levittown, Pennsylvania, made the tackle, but it's another Panther first down. A little more conservative game plan this, this series. Well, they're, once again, they pull both the uh, guard and the tackle. There's the All-American covert coming into your picture. That's a good limp leg and a spin move, though. Pittsburgh backs have done a very good job on it uh, on this AstroTurf. Brian Thomas now, nine carries for 23 yards. As you look at the pit bench, Ball at the 40, first down, Panthers again the tailback, Thomas following the lead block by McIntyre gets about five more. Again, Jim Martello made the tackle. Good lead block by the fullback. He did a good job, but give credit to Martello. We get a look at the quarterback. Uh, this is Jack LaPrairie. Let's take a look at the lead block up here as number three, Marlon McIntyre, takes on the linebacker 
for Rutgers. That's number 51, Marcelli. He's able to slip it, makes the play. That'll bring up second and about five. Trying to stay dry. The pit band on the sidelines. It's been raining since well before the ball game began. On the sweep. First down, Pitt Panthers. Coming up to make the hit was number 19, Rich Wright. But Thomas got outside, got a little running room, and he can really stretch it out when he turns that corner. Okay, you got to be impressed with their toss sweep this, this day. Here they go. They pull a tackle and a guard. Big 77 out leading is Ron Sams. He's 6'4", 270. So we're going to have an effort. It's going to come back because we're going to have a clipping call. And Marino heads back to his huddle. The call is against the University of Pittsburgh. The officials will mark it back into Pitt territory inside the 40 all the way to the 37. So a big penalty against Pittsburgh. It'll be second down coming up and about 13 yards to go. It's been tough for Rutgers. I'll tell you one guy who really flies around and impresses you in that secondary though is Bill Houston. The strong safety. He's a strong hitter. He's got a lot of opportunities today because Pittsburgh gets in that secondary pretty quick. But uh, good looking athlete. Probably the best we've seen out here today for Rutgers. George Piquel is now playing the nose guard for the Scarlet Knights. His brother Bill Piquel is an outstanding player, but his hurt is not playing. You can see what Danny Marino has done coming into this game. His numbers are awesome. He has pits all time everything low. They've got a good screen set up for McIntyre. McIntyre trying to fight his way toward midfield. And he just about got there. They had that screen set up nicely. Harold Young in there to lead the defense along with Keith Wetzel, but old McIntyre just kept moving it on out. You know, it didn't look like it was going to go for much when it first started because Rutgers read it pretty good. So people got out just a shade quick on the right side. 51 coming into your picture quickly for Pittsburgh with Magnelli, the center, having to play there today because of the injury to Freilich as Sweeney has kicked over. But that's just good running and a great effort. He refuses to go down. Got close to a first down, about a yard away. Third down, short yardage. The Panthers go to the double tight formation. Here's a good look at Bob Dumont, number 35. Marino flags down everywhere as Danny sneaks across the 50. 9-12 to play in the first half. Pit on top, 21 nothing. We'll check the official call. Looked like Dunn, number 61, on the left side, moved too soon. Illegal procedure against Pitt. So they'll march it back five yards. It'll be third down and six. The ball will go back to the pit 45. The Panthers started this drive at their own 15 yard line. Pitt scored the first three times they had the ball. Drives of 48, 52, and 16 yards. And the faithful who are here are trying to stay dry. I guess if you have a headset on, you don't worry about the rain, huh? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so now they'll send Julius Dawkins back in the lineup. That's Julius at the top of the screen, number 80. They set Brian Thomas in the slot to the left. Put the other wide receiver to the right side of the screen. Moreno on third and about six, looking for somebody to throw the football to. Running away from pressure. Now he throws deep over the head of everybody. He threw that one away. Dawkins was there. He had a crowd of three defenders around him, and Moreno said, well, I'll just throw this one away. Rutgers just can't get a pass rush going as Moreno had all day, but the secondary did a good job. That time, Compaglio and Howard stayed at home and were able to uh, keep that pass from being completed. So Tony Reccia will be on to punt for the University of Pittsburgh. Burke and Young will be deep. There is Reccia. Only punted twice prior to today. His longest was 48. He's averaging 45. Nice high kick. Fair catch signal at the 15. And that's where Burke will take it. A 40-yard kick. At the 15-yard line, Rutgers will have the ball. 8.37 remaining in the first half. It is Pitt 21, the Scarlet Knights nothing. We'll be back after this. A little soggy here in Pitt Stadium. Rutgers down by three touchdowns, has the ball just outside their own 15-yard line. Man in motion is Baker. Then they give straight ahead to the lone back in that backfield. Rich Cranach wrapped him up. Not much there at all. 8.25 to go. Clock running. Got the new quarterback in now, number 10, Eric Hochberg. Taking over for LaPrairie, who uh, had a little bit of a problem. Hochberg is just a freshman. He's an honorable mention all-stater. Where is he from? He's from State College, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Joe Lennon. <laughs> Home of the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Eric Hochberg. 
He's hit 34 of 64, 350 yards, one TD, a couple of interceptions. He's a righty. And that pass is complete. Out to about the 21-yard line. Not too much yardage. Michael Brooks came up defensively, but the pass was complete to Eric Johnson, number 87. So it'll be third down. Ball is going to be placed just outside the 21. Third and about four and a half. And down on the play is Hochberg. So the quarterbacks are dropping like flies for Rutgers. I didn't even see him get hit. It was looking downfield, but apparently it's the right elbow. So Hochberg is being administered to 739 to play first half. Pitt, all of its points coming in the first quarter, 21-0 over Rutgers. Well, it's got to be a little discouraging, John, when you, you come into a ball game and the things that you do best, you know you really can't do against Pittsburgh. That's run the quick trap, the toss sweep, the sprint draw, and you don't have the people that are going to be able to knock them off the line of scrimmage. So you got to do what you really don't want to do, and that's throw. Now you got your, your number two quarterback down after the first one went down. Maybe he hyperextended the arm or it could be a collarbone. He's in a lot of pain. And he comes in and runs three, uh, two plays, and now he's going to go off. So they'll have to go back to LaPrairie. Or Joe Garfino. Uh... But we're going to take a break here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. 21-0. More after this. By the deep man, trying to get outside and pick up that first down is Joe Burke, but he is not going to make it because Rick Franak is there. Number 55 made the tackle. Gain of a yard or two, and that is all. And once again, the Scarlet Knights are going to have to kick at her. Boy, that front line is just too tough for Pitt. And, you know, they had something going there, too, is they got a good lead block from number 39, Brian Moore, but Pittsburgh just closes everything down. Liska will kick. Jellick and Williams will be deep. Came into this game averaging about 37 yards a kick. They let it roll, and it gets a great Rutgers bounce inside the 20-yard line. The two deep men for Pitt did not field the football with 6.48 to go. There goes Hochberg into the dressing room. We'll check on his condition when we get a chance. So already Rutgers has been through two quarterbacks. And their best linebacker, Dumont. So it's been a rough afternoon so far for the Scarlet Knights. State University of New Jersey, the ball at the 17 for the Pitt Panthers. Their second possession of this second quarter, they started their other drive at the 15. Joe McCall will be in the lineup along with Brian Thomas. McCall the fullback, Thomas the tailback, Danny Marino the quarterback. Fake to Thomas. Marino firing the football, complete to the tight end. That is Clint Wilson who has the ball. Wilson is down at about the 23-24 yard line. Pickup of about six on the play. Coach Fazio works with a headset on. Here's that play again. I thought Campaglio had something going here. Thought he might get the interception. Instead, makes the tackle. Just a nice little cross pattern once again. And they've been able to do this at will with the cushion that Rutgers gives you. Second down and third. Ball at the 24-yard line. Arena now 11 out of 13. He's got 121 yards passing. McCall out of the high formation. Joe McCall banging his way to a first down for Pitt out near the 29-yard line. And Ron Sams threw an extra hit there. Let's see if they call it or if they go against Rutgers. Now it's Sams. It is against Sams. We'll take another look here. Ronnie Sams is the guy I believe that they do nick, number 77. So uh, the Panthers are going to pick up a major one. Making the tackle was... Craig Hoffner, number 63, a junior from Maple Shade, New Jersey, but the referee is going to step it off against the University of Pittsburgh. Back all the way inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, the holding call. So it'll be second down 13 now for the Panthers, and they're going to keep this drive going against Frank Burns and the Scarlet Knights. They're going to have to air it out a little bit. Less than six minutes remaining. Danny Marino, who has been outstanding, has missed only two completions this afternoon. Already has a couple of touchdown passes. Brian Thomas in motion. Marino looks that way. Fire. Complete. Out near the 30-yard line. Dwight Collins, number 32. Tackled by Bob Dumont. But they come right back to pick up the yardage in the first down. On a second and 13, they move the ball all the way outside the 30. 
They overload now. Out of a slot, they use motion to get three receivers over there and wide open as they just come up with a crossing pattern that they've been throwing. So by throwing out in the, uh, in the flat to Collins, they're able to pick up a good yardage. Tony Sagnella is in the lineup, a freshman playing tackle right now for the Scarlet Knights. It's time to hand it to McCall. 35, close to the 39-yard line for Joe. Five minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the halftime. Let's watch some more of this line play. All right, they pull back. 75 is the All-American covert next to Feta. They just get it done here. Good yardage. It's number 34, McCall gets it done. Here's another QB warming up for Rutgers. This is Keith Hudak, a junior. So Hudak, number 14, is warming up. Marino doesn't like what he sees. He wants a new football, I believe. You can see Jim Sweeney there, who is playing out of position. He's been a center all year, but they moved him over to tackle for this game when Fralick came up with a neck problem right before the ball game. So the Pitt Panthers getting a good look at some of their people. Good test here in the first half. It'll be interesting to see also how, how long he goes with some of these people. Well, it will. And you know, you're talking about Sweeney. I, I know he hadn't played that much tackle, but boy, he rolls his hips and gets into somebody quick. He squares the body, and he's on him quickly. It is second and three. Straight ahead running the fullback. It's a couple across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Not much there for Marlon McIntyre, number three. Marlon, a sophomore from Pricedale, six feet even, 197-pounder, 230 yards rushing, and a couple of touchdowns coming into the game. How many quarterbacks do you suppose Rutgers has? Enough? I knew they had the three. I wasn't aware of Hudak. Uh, they had a, another young guy that we were talking about a little earlier, but it's been a tough go. I'm not sure if La Prairie is hurt. They were taking a look at his finger earlier as we get the measurement here. 21 nothing. the Panthers out in front with 450 to play first half here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Marino there to oversee. Says okay, I know where it is. It is just short of the first down. John, we were talking earlier. And I really believe that the NFL strike has really hurt the uh, University of Pittsburgh because that's all the talk has been on the talk shows. People have been complaining about the offense and it really has just been a, like uh, being under a microscope. Marino 12 of 16. Did he get there? I don't believe so. It's going to be very, very close. Good short yardage defense by Rutgers. They got in the gap submarine, let the backers clean up pretty good. Let's take another look. Look at the surge underneath there, and there's the backers cleaning up. That's what you're supposed to do. Get down, let the hogs get underneath and submarine. Good effort by Rutgers. Frank Burns has been an outstanding coach, John, and he hadn't been happy with his ball club this year. Pittsburgh will punt it, and the fans don't like it. Put the ball at the Panther 41 yard line. They'd elect to kick it away. Burke and Young will be deep. Reccia, who's kicked twice, averaging just over 39 yards. This is not a real good kick. See what kind of roll it gets as far as Pitt is concerned. It may have touched a Rutgers guy. Let's well, take a we'll look. see what the officials say. No, they say no, it belongs to Rutgers. Very close. Almost hit one of the linemen dropping back. That was Pickle, the down lineman. And Frank Burns isn't very happy. The Rutgers is going to have the football at the 28 yard line. It'll be first down 10. We'll take a timeout with three minutes and 53 seconds remaining till halftime here. It is still pit 21 Rutgers nothing. This is Jack LaPrairie who's back in at quarterback. Even though he has the problem on his right hand he goes to the running back his tailback moving up to about the 30 yard line. Didn't pick up very much. Once again, trying to run behind Tony Sella and Lamont Green, and they got a couple of horses to go against Bill Moss and Rich Cranick. Well, they really do. Frank Burns, a look of concern on his face as he winds up his 10th season at Rutgers. Ball at the 30-yard line. It is second down and eight. Moore and Smith are the running backs. Wide receiver in motion is Baker. Here comes the blitz. The Prairie got rid of it and he completes the pass. Across the 40 to the 42 yard line. That pass is complete. A great shot was put on. Troy Hill coming up to bang the receiver down. But the pass is complete to Eric Johnson, number 87. Here it is. 
Little throw back. Boy, you're going to get that headgear in the back, and LaPrairie does a good job, as does Johnson. Watch the contact. Let's take a look at what happens to Pelusi up front. First, as they double up on him, of course, when you're a nose guard, you just expect that. Your, your job is to keep people off of the backers. And that's a good effort by uh, the Rutgers left guard, number 68, Lamont Green. Two minutes and 48 seconds till halftime. The ball is at the 43. Again, it is Baker in motion. La Prairie rolling to his right. Pass is caught, but he's out of bounds. It was Andrew Baker who caught the ball, the man in motion. Are they going to give him the catch over there or not? have a man down on the field along the line that's John Owens number 72 the junior Come on. Come on. Come on. 6'3 230 pounder and he is down stretched out on this carpet which is very very damp it has been raining the entire game wind out of the south southeast gusting up to 25 miles an hour temperature hovering around 50 degrees a very chilly afternoon second down play is coming up for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers simply hasn't been able to do very much. Of course, Irv, they haven't had much field position either. They really haven't. What The one thing they have been able to do, John, after the first three times Pittsburgh had the football and was able to score, they have been able to tighten up defensively. It's just tough getting something going on offense. Owens, one of their better linemen, they like to run behind Owens and Spitzer on the right side, is down. He was a tackle in 1981, moved to a guard. Well, they've lost uh, a linebacker. They've also lost... A couple of quarterbacks, so the first quarterback to go down is now back in there. This is football, and we have basketball coming up on ESPN. How about Wyoming and Memphis State here on your Total Sports Network? What a great lineup of basketball we have for you this year. This one will be Saturday, November the 27th, and it is live on ESPN. Jim Thacker and Dick Vitale will be in the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. To keep your eyes on a guy by the name of Keith Lee. What a Keith great player. Keith Lee and Mike Jackson from Wyoming. That's a couple of guys that uh, really get after pretty good. Dana Kirk could have one of the better ball clubs in the country. He had one of the better ones last year. Yes, he did. And I imagine they'll get after Louisville. Louisville will get after them. They always do. John Owens is leaving the field, much to the chagrin of Frank Burns, who faces the sidelines for the Scarlet. 18 straight wins, 75-76. What a great couple of years there. This is second down. Warren Smith, the running backs. That's Baker in motion. He looks for him, finds him, gets away from one man, and gets into pit territory to about the 47-yard line. That's Rick Cranach, number 55, was there. Also coming up was Rick Dukovic, number 11. That's quite a catch by Baker looking over the left shoulder. And uh, here's a little dart throw here by LaPrairie, and he throws it pretty good, so that hand must be okay. But look at Baker, turn back to the right side, makes a good catch, and is able to have that upper body strength to fight off the initial tackle. This guy's got good speed and a good pair of hands. Coach Fazio on the sideline. It's a third and one for the opposition. Rutgers looking at that with coming up on two minutes remaining in the first half. Pitt has led all the way, scoring the first three times they touched the ball. 21-0 in favor of Pittsburgh. The Prairie trying to pick up the first down on his own. He does. He got down below the pursuit and moved inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Good effort that time by Jack LaPrairie. Some kind of effort is right. With 151 left, if uh, Rutgers has any designs being competitive in the second half, they really got to get on the board with something. Pittsburgh was in the gaps. I thought Frank Burns did an excellent job there having LaPrairie roll out, and they pick up the first. He'll come back and throw it now with 146 remaining. A year ago, Rutgers scored first against the University of Pittsburgh and led 3-0. Panthers went on to win that game with relative ease, 47 to 3. Smith and Moore with Baker in motion. Up, oh, movement on the right side. Rick Spitzer, I believe, stood up. And that will cost them five. It comes at a, a bad time, too. A minute 32 to play. Scarlet Knights finally getting a little offense to go, and they get stopped by a penalty. You know, I think the finest moment I can remember in recent years is when Rutgers beat Tennessee when they had that good ball club. They just did a very good job. Burns is very respected around the country, and it's been tough on him uh, the last couple of years because the guys had some good football teams. Well, this team is a very young football team, so there's still some, some good young men for the future. Baker in motion as they have an extra, tie, an extra wide receiver in the lineup right now. LaFerry looks deep. Down the sidelines, intercepted. 
Did he have the ball or no? That's John Lewis with a beautiful diving interception. And he deserves a couple of high fives for that one, Herb. Listen, this is the guy who's so improved in spring ball. They worked very hard to get him to uh, be much improved in man coverage. And what a job he does here because the left hander threw it pretty good. But Lewis, who's 5'10, 165, this is third interception of the year. But it's not going to count. <laughs> They're going to bring him <laughs> back, so we'll forget all those nice words. <laughs> it was still a great play. Let's watch the coverage. He had him down the sideline pretty well, Irv. Did a very good job. Funneled it to the outside, and that ball was thrown pretty good, too. But that's a pretty good athlete. Jumps well. He sealed him off, went up to get it. The penalty goes against the University of Pittsburgh. The football will be marched all the way inside the 35 yard line. Once again, 111 left. Rutgers can get on the board. They can make a go of it in the second half because their defense has tightened up after Pittsburgh just came out and uh, just took it to them early. So LaPrairie will probably put it up again to get a break. A minute 11 to play in the half. 21 0 is the score. Ball at the 33. First down. Johnson, Karpinski, and Baker. Three wideouts in the lineup right now for Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights set it up with Moore and Smith in the backfield with Jack LaPrairie. Fortunately, the injured fingers were his right hand, not his left hand. That's Baker in motion. They use him in motion all the time. They look to him. And it's thrown over the head of everybody. A minute eight remaining in the first half. Scarlett have a good field goal kicker in Alex Falcinelli. He's got decent range. And once again, the importance right now for Frank Burns' team is to get something on the board. Their face was second and ten. You got a quick shot of Danny Marino talking to Joe Daniels, the offensive coordinator for the University of Pittsburgh. And if there are two people who've been under a lot of heat in this city, it's Dan Marino and Joe Daniels, I'll tell you that. Really have it. Uh, it's been something. As I mentioned earlier, you know, you're eight and one, you're looking for a raise. <laughs> and the pressure's been unbelievable this year. McCrary got some pressure, gets away. Wayne Glikowski is still after him, and he's finally dropped. Hey, give Michael Brooks some credit. He missed him once, got up, went after him again. He's number 50, along with number six, Al Wenglikowski. They finally wrapped him up. I like Brooks. I saw him when he was a junior college player at Scottsdale. In fact, he was an All-American. They call him Batman. He's 6'2", 220, an All-American in high school. And as you point out, John, he misses, but he's the one that caused the big loss. And now they're way out of field goal range. Take another look, another angle here. Pretty active kid, LaPrairie, but uh, that's a lot of folks in blue jerseys getting after him. It is a 15 yard loss. And LaPrairie has been sacked in this game a total of four times. Third down. Timeout is called with 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Our numbers are getting all wet up here. 44 yards and losses. Is that right, Charlie? Okay. We are enclosed, however. There's no window. We are? Oh. <laughs> no, this water, that water all over your sheets is just a mirage, you understand. We have a roof over our heads, but there's nothing in front of us, and it keeps blowing in. Pittsburgh in scoring, defensively, 11.9 points a game. We've talked about that defense a lot. They have been outstanding, and I think, of course, when you look at the stats in the first half, I'm sure I'm going to show Rutgers with probably minus yardage overall because they've gotten a couple of plays. Here's where we are. You see it, but there's nothing up here except <laughs> when the wind blows, the water comes in, right? High above the playing field at Pitt Stadium to get a good look at the press box area and some of the covered seating here for the rest of the folks. And this place holds 56,000. They played to almost capacity for the season, the exception being today when the rain and the weather has held things down a little bit. Third down, 25 for Coach Fazio and the Pitt Panthers. Got to be thinking Cotton Bowl. We get close to halftime. 21 nothing. Pitt is out in front. The running backs continue to be Moore and Smith. Moore is the fullback. Smith is the halfback. Three wide receivers in the game also. The Prairie. He's got a lot of company back there. Runs away and throws. Pass complete. It was complete downfield. Rick Dukovich made the hit on Baker, but Andrew Baker, the sophomore from Trenton, Covered a lot of the field that time, Irv, to get open. They're still short of the first down, obviously, because they needed 25 yards. Baker really is talented, and like uh, a lot of the wide receivers you see nowadays, a basketball player in high school. Let's take a look at some of the pursuit of the defensive line as Belusi and Zoli, Moss really get after folks. They're strong, but they also move well. Left-hander LaPrairie did a good job in avoiding some people. There's number 63, 
Mazzoli, who has 11 sacks this year, putting some pressure on. So a good catch. What does he get drilled, though? You pay for it against his secondary when you make a catch with your back to him. Paul Sinelli is going to attempt the field goal. This will be a 51-yard, 16 of 16 PATs, 10 of 13 field goals as he hooks this one. Is it going to be long enough? Yes, it is. It comes with seven seconds remaining in the half. Alex Falsinelli with his 11th field goal of the year, a boomer from 51 yards. Hey, you know how tough that was? Hudak didn't get a good snap, and he's juggling, putting it down. Falsinelli didn't let it bother him at all, so Rutgers gets on the board, and boy, is that a moral lift for you going in at halftime. They're down 21-3, to three, but the way this thing started out, it could be a lot worse. A 51-yard field goal. It is 21-3 now. We still have... A few ticks left on the clock here in the first half of play. Seven seconds remaining. You talk about a few ticks left. This was a situation SMU and Texas Tech were in. Texas Tech, instead of uh, squibbing the ball, kicked it deep, and SMU remained unbeaten with a little trick play. A deep man for the University of Pittsburgh will be Darnell Stone, number 46, and number 19, Barry Compton. The Panthers have given up three points here. And defensively, we showed you a while ago, they're only allowing about 12 points a game. Number six in the nation overall defensively. A lot of men bunched up front for Pittsburgh. The kick is going to go deep over the head of Barry Compton into the end zone. So we still have seven seconds left. Nobody touched the football. And the Panthers will set it up. All of Pitt's touchdowns came in the first quarter. This is only their third possession of the second quarter of play. First two drives, Irv, one started at the 15, another one at the 17, and the Panthers have not been able to sustain the long drive in this quarter anyway. Well, you know what's interesting? Uh, I felt that if uh, they would have been able to do it in the second period, you'd see a lot of other folks to start the third period. Now, I don't think that's the case. I think you see this bunch that we're looking at right now, including this guy, Dan Marino. Seven seconds for Danny Marino. Let's see if he's going to air it out one more time. Throw short to Joe McCall. Slipping and falling near the 29-yard line. Halftime is here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. The Pitt Panthers comfortably in front at the end of the first half of play. University of Pittsburgh 21, Rutgers 3. This is how they happen. With Irv Brown, this is John Sanders. Welcome back to the University of Pittsburgh, where the Panthers are leading the Scarlet Knights 21 to 3 as our halftime score. The rain continues to fall. The Panthers offensively, statistically, have been dominating, Irv. Yeah, they really have. There's the story right there. A minus eight yards in rushing, and weather conditions aren't going to get any better. The Panthers dominating this game, as you can see. And the only turnover in the game was an interception by the University of Pittsburgh of an attempted pass by the Rutgers. Kickoff is coming. It is short. Rutgers trying just about everything. At the 42-yard line, the Pitt Panthers have it. I don't think they were totally surprised by that move. You know, that showed me something, though, no, because uh, they've got to do everything and anything to try and get back in it. Doesn't pay off, but what do you got to lose when you're 5-5 five and five and... You're going against people that uh, have superior manpower. That was a linebacker, Caesar Alderser, who fell on the ball at the 41. So Pitt will have it. All the Panther scoring came in the first quarter. 21-3 is our score. Thomas and McCall are the running backs. They split now behind Dan Marino. Passing formation as far as Pitt is concerned. And that's what Marino will do. A lot of time. Flag down as he fires to the far sideline. Pass is complete to Brian Thomas. Things are popping here in Pittsburgh, right? They stuck them pretty good out there. There's a couple of guys that are having a good time. See what the flag's for. Looks like an ineligible receiver downfield. Somebody got down too far. Might have been Anthony Magnelli, the center, on the play. 14 minutes, 49 seconds to go. Third quarter, we have just started. And Pitt is going to be moved back. Change their defense a little uh, time. Cover five. They rolled up to the line of scrimmage. And even though the play is called back, the coverage was definitely there as Johnson had a good hit. In the first half, Marino 13 of 17 for 149 yards and two touchdowns. The best receiver was McCall, who caught five. Marino throwing for the second time. This one is complete to Brian Thomas at the 40-yard line. Look at the crowd he draws, though, John. His four white shirts are all over Thomas. Short yardage, about four yards. Martello, Wetzel, Wetzel, 
Here's another look. They've been thrown underneath all day long. This time Rutgers adjust very well. There's the cross underneath, but four white shirts have come into the picture quickly to keep it to short yardage. At the 41, it is third and 10. So Marino still in a passing situation. Move Thomas into the slot at the right. You see him there. McCall, the only setback, pitches it forward to McCall. He's got 10 yards, 15 yards. He moves into Rutgers territory down at the 42-yard line. Joe McCall, a designed play, he delays. Marino just shovels it to him, and it picked up big yardage. That's called the old Utah pass. I think Jack Curtis is the guy who originated. Take a look. It's a forward pass if you drop it and not a lateral. There it is, and there goes McCall. Boy, that's tough when you're trying to put on a pass rush. McCall will take you on. Watch him lower his shoulder, take care of the football, and take on the DB. Down to the 42-yard line. Big gainer for Pittsburgh. Thomas and McCall are the running backs in the eye formation. McCall right now is playing fullback. Marino will pass out of the eye. Going deep. Right there to grab the ball is Collins. Dwight Collins. Harold Young, number two, is with him. He just threw the ball up that time, Irvin. Let Collins go get it. Oh, well, you got a guy 5'9 going against a guy 6'1. This pass should have been picked off, but when you got a big size differential like that, because the ball was thrown into the wind, it hangs. And Young is right there, but he's just a little guy going against one of the better receivers in America. 36-yard pickup for Dwight Collins. There it is. You can see good position by Young. He played that well. Actually, the ball shouldn't have been thrown. That's what uh, superior size means. Marino now over 200 yards, 207 yards passing. Brian Thomas, who has one touchdown, trying to get outside. He's still on his feet, but he's going to be trapped. Charging in to stack up the play was Carl Howard, a senior from Irvington, New Jersey. He's the one that really stretched it out and would not allow Thomas to get anywhere. Well, this guy's got great instincts. He's a walk-on. Look at this, out of the robust or power eye. He just takes on 32 and does an excellent job. 32 is Dwight Collins, and he overpowers it. That's quite a play by the walk-on Howard. He lost six on the play, back to the 12, second down and goal. Marino's only misfired four times, two touchdowns. Brian Thomas in the slot to his right as he calls an audible. The lone setback is McCall. Marino looks to the end zone, throws for his tight end. He's got it near the goal line. No, he does not have it. Did not have the football. Had it for a minute near the goal line. Clint Wilson, the tight end, could not hang on, Irv. He's 6'3", 220. Once again, they'd like to get John Brown back. Another look at Wilson. This is the cross pattern that Marino has thrown so effectively. He guns it all six foot four inches, throws it hard, and looked like he had it, but the officials rule otherwise. Could not quite hang on. 12.40 to play third quarter. The Panthers now looking at third and goal. Ball at the 12. The big play of Howard really important. Let's see if the Rutgers can hang on and possibly force a field goal attempt. Third down. Marino going for it all. He's under pressure, gets away. Throws for Thomas, in and out of his hands, incomplete. Marino got away from the rush that time. Could not find Brian Thomas, and Eric Schubert will come on. Rutgers came pretty good. Number 63 putting the pressure on was Hoffner, the down lineman who's filling in for Curtile today. So apparently we'll get that field goal effort. Schubert is on. This year he is 8 of 15 in the field goal category. His longest is 48. It came against Notre Dame. The kick will come from the 19, so that will make it a 29-yard field goal attempt for Eric Schubert. He's a walk-on also. His kick is up. And his kick is through there. So Eric Schubert with a 29-yard field goal. 12.30 remaining third quarter. Pitt has stretched its lead. It's now the Panthers 24, the Scarlet Knights 3. We'll be back to Pitt Stadium after this. There is truly a bowl bonanza coming up here on your Total Sports Network. How about this lineup? Independence, Holiday, California, Tangerine, Aloha Bowl. Those will all be televised live on your Total Sports Network. We have the Liberty Bowl, the Hall of Fame, the Blue Bonnet, a slight delay there. Rose Bowl on a delay basis. The Senior Bowl is live. So any bowl you want to see, Irv, right here is the place to be because we've got them all. That's right. <laughs> Great football coming up on ESPN. Panthers going 48 yards in seven plays, two minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. The field goal, 29 yards, and the Panthers lead it 24 to 3. Schubert will kick it off. He'll be kicking once again to Burke. 
time he's kicking against the wind, so Burke's got a chance to bring it out. He'll take it at about the three yard line, the 10 to 15. Out across the 20, he's tripped up as the flag goes down right at his feet as he gets to the 22. We'll check the penalty. Brooke brought it back. Pretty good return that time. Dean made the tackle for Pittsburgh. The officials will chat it over here. Looked like they got a clip on 64, and I don't have a number um, or a name, I should say, on number 64 for Rutgers. Anyway, it'll go against the Scarlet, and they'll start with awful field position at their 11. Minus eight yards rushing in the first half as a team. Master, the reason for that is that La Prairie was sacked six times for 33 yards and losses. Williams carried six times for six, six yards in the first half of play. Burke is the running back along with Moore. This is Burke to the 15. It's away all the way out near the 25 yard line. Burke did a good job. Troy Hill, number 22, stayed with him for Pittsburgh, but that's about an 11-yard pickup. Good first down that time. Well, they ran behind Owens and Spitzer. Spitzer's been a very consistent football player for Frank Burns. They just wall it off pretty good, and Burke runs with authority here. Let him square those shoulders up to the line of scrimmage and fight for extra yardage. Out to the 24, first down 10 as you look at this young man run. Number 34 is Joe Burke. Picked up 264 yards coming in. That, of course, is the longest rushing pickup of the day. Burke moves in the slot. They go to the fullback, and there's nothing there for Bryant Moore. One or two yards, Dave Pizzoli. The left tackle made the tackle on the play, along with Pelusi, Moss, Brooks, Wing Likowski, Cranach, Jones. A little smile on the face of Foge Fazio. Nothing to laugh about on the Rutgers side of the field. 11.40 to go. Clock is running. It's 24-3. Pitt has led all the way. Give him two yards on the plate at the 26. Make it second down eight. The fullback is Moore set up behind the quarterback. Jack LaFerry. Great drop this time. Dumps it out to Burke. No, they say he did not catch the ball in time. It hit the turf at the 20. It'll go as an incomplete pass, and it'll bring up third down and eight. A lot of pressure that time from 71, Bill Moss. The Prairie tried to dump it off, just didn't go. Third and long, here's another look at some of the pressure. Also coming in, the cornerback for the University of Pittsburgh, number 29, short. And you saw that Burke attempted to grab it right at the 20. The official said he did not get it in time, so the ball remains at the 26-yard line. Third down eight for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Five and six last year. If they lose today, they will finish at five and six for this year. Panthers trying to go nine and one with Penn State to come. Wayne Glukowski is coming this time. Throw down the middle. is intercepted by the University of Pittsburgh. Picked off by number 22, Troy Hill. Hill still running the football. Spinning inside the 30-yard line before he's gang tackled. The ball was tipped. John Lewis is the guy that came uh, up with a tip play. They practice it every day, John, and it really pays off. Here it is again. Out of twins, they come back with motion. The lefty LaFerry sets up. Lewis will tip it. There's the interception. Every day you work on it, and there's a reason for it. It's a pretty good little run. I'll tell you what, it wasn't exactly north and south the whole time. A little bit of east and west, but it gives you your money's worth. <laughs> People slipping and sliding all over the field. <laughs> Finally <laughs> brought down by his own man. <laughs> 11 minutes and three seconds to go. Ball spotted at about the 28-yard line, just inside the 29. Marino and the Panthers with McCall and Thomas still in the backfield. Still basically the first unit in there for Pittsburgh. Rutgers shows blitz. Marino sets up and fires. Pass is dropped. The tight end, Clint Wilson, simply could not hang on at the 23-yard line. You know, it looked like a, an outfielder backing up for a fly ball. When you get on your heels, the ball bounces. Take another look at that interception, John, as Lewis does a good job here with the tip play. And then Rutgers has got to go uh, immediately and try and make a tackle here. They don't have to because number 63 for Pittsburgh makes the tackle himself. You know, I guess when you're so used to making tackles like Pizzoli is <laughs> and has been, he gets the job done. They bring in some extra defensive backs now. I believe they may have as many as six out there. There's a bunch of those people. Marino looking into the teeth of that, fires, and completes the pass. 
Good enough for a first down to Dwight Collins. Rick Wright, number 19, was with him. Wright, not quite in time. Went for the interception. Marino says that avoid, Dwight. Interesting bootleg action here as they pull the left tackle. This is uh, Tony Brown go, filling man. in. There's a good effort by Marino to put the ball between coverage pretty good. Collins goes out of bounds. Keith Williams, the senior from Syracuse, has replaced Julius Dawkins right now for the University of Pittsburgh. 25 of these players are seniors playing their final home game in Pitt Stadium. Of course, next week for Pitt will be a game at State College, Pennsylvania against Penn State. Rutgers finishing the season this afternoon. Rain continues to fall. Marino, quick throw, complete to Brian Thomas. Thomas backs out of bounds inside the 15. Lionel Washington, number 97, ran him out. Thomas just kind of backed out near the 12-yard line. That's been the game plan the entire day. Clear out with a wide receiver, send a back out in the flat. It's been very effective. The Panthers with the football, 10-21 to go. Marino now 223 yards unofficially, 18 of 26 passing. They have five defensive backs in the lineup on second down, about five and a half for Pitt. Marino rolling up the yardage this afternoon. 10-21 to play in the third period. Thomas on the sweep. Gets away from one man, dives down to the 10-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. Out in front, McCall was trying to block for him. Man got away. Campaglio. Take another look, John. This Campaglio, they come out of the eye this time rather than the power eye and the toss sweep. 39 Campaglio will come up, 37 that is, makes the hit, unable to hang on, but uh, that actually is what forces uh, the back number 44 Thomas to the ground. So we've got a third and short. It is third and about three, as a matter of fact. McCall is the setback. They go with three wide receivers and a tight end. Keith Williams, Dawkins is in there along with Collins. Passing formation for Pittsburgh. Marino looking to the end zone, firing. He's got his man in the end zone for a touchdown. That's the senior, Keith Williams. And Williams has just scored his first touchdown of the year. Keith Williams. They only rushed three, dropped eight, and still Marino just guns it. Look at him throw it through coverage. Williams makes a fine fingertip catch. Panthers lead 30 to three. Let's take a look at another angle. Six foot four inch Danny Marino. Turns it over pretty good that time to Williams. So the touchdown, the Panthers increase their lead to 30 to three. On to try his fourth extra point of the afternoon, Derek Schubert. Bangs it through there once again, and the Pitt Panthers increase that lead to 31 to three. Marino now has thrown three touchdown passes this afternoon. 9.31 to go in the third period. 31-3, Pitt is leading Rutgers. of the Davis Cup here on ESPN. It all starts with singles matches on Friday, November the 26th from Grenoble, France. The United States against France. Then on Saturday the 27th, we'll have more action for you. This will be the doubles competition. Again, it's live, 9 o'clock on the East Coast, 6 a.m. for those of you on the West Coast. It all winds up with more singles matches on Sunday, November the 28th, 8.30 in the morning in the East, 5.30 in the morning in the West Coast, live right here on ESPN, the battle for the Davis Cup. Pitt Panthers battling for a spot in the Cotton Bowl this afternoon, leading Rutgers 31 to three. They beat him a year ago, 47 to three. So things are kind of repeating as far as Rutgers is concerned. Burke will take it at about the two yard line across the 15 to 20. Lost the ball. And it looks like the Panthers have a shot at it. We'll see who winds up with it. Burke dropped the ball as he crossed the 20 yard line and the University of Pittsburgh gets another break. Another look, Burke was running pretty good. Doesn't have that thing tucked away very well, though. It looks like he'll get hit right there by number 28 from Pittsburgh. That causes it. That's Dean doing a good job on special teams. Reno is back in the ball game. He's throwing his third touchdown pass. That's the ninth time that he's done it in his career. 31 to three with 923 remaining in the third period. Killen made the reception number 91. Marino's number is 19 of 27, 233 yards. And he has three touchdowns, including that one that wrapped up a minute and 31 drive, five plays, 28 yards to Foster Williams. So it'll be first down 10. The Pitt Panthers have the ball at the 26 yard line. They split the backs and Marino looks for more. Dumps it off to McIntyre. 
At the 20 yard line, he's brought down a gain of six. Marlon McIntyre is a sophomore. Coming into this game, he caught 11 passes. Here's number 12. Here's a dump off pass. They've been using it effectively all day. Marino threw 42 times against Notre Dame, had 17 in the first half today. He's been able to throw at will in the flat. Number three, McIntyre shakes and bakes, gets some yardage, second down and about five. Marino, 8.46 to go third quarter, 20 of 28, 238 yards and three touchdowns. He has not thrown an interception. If you're a Pitt fan, that's good news. McIntyre, a couple yards, not much there. He is dragged down as he hits into the line. Randy Hannes is there, along with Tony Sagnella, number 78. Sagnella is a freshman. I would point out again that this Rutgers team is a good young team. They have a lot of young players. They've got some good athletes, John. Just the guy we were talking about, Randy Hannes. They call him the blonde bomber. He's very strong. He just needs to play. And, of course, he's going against some very good folks today. Third down, a couple of yards to go for Pitt. Marino checking off at the line of scrimmage. Thomas in the slot to the left. Quick pass over the middle. Dawkins has it. Inside the 10, he cuts back. And he gets out at about the one-yard line. Harold Young and Bill Houston ran him out of bounds. Dawkins catching the ball, doubling back, and almost scored a touchdown. Well, you talk about some skills. He's got the size the pros want. Watch him explode here as he sees the goal line. He doesn't get in, but this is extra special. He just puts it uh, into high gear right here, almost high step to the cross. It'll be first and goal for the Pitt Panthers. Ball inside the one. Julius Dawkins. In 82, you see what he's done. He has a touchdown catch this afternoon. So he's done a great job all year long. Double tight end formation for Pitt. They'll attempt to punch it in. It is 31 to 3. The Panthers driving for more. Interception and a fumble recovery setting them up after Pitt had scored on their first possession of this period. On a field goal. Diving in is Brian Thomas. Did he make it? Flag down. Marino. Not very happy as he talks to the officials. Delay of game has been called. So they'll move it back. It'll still be first and goal, but the ball will come back to the six. That's interesting. Most teams try to score that way, playing paratrooper. And that's really uh, one way you can do it, or you can do it another way, too. Just quarterback sneak, so you take the middle linebacker out of it. In this case, they score, but it doesn't count, so... Pittsburgh will try it again. There's the penalties and the story. Pitt's picked up a few. So now they load up the backfield. There's Collins in the backfield. McIntyre inside the five as he jams his way down to about the three-yard line. All kinds of Scarlet Knight players there. We do have a flag down again, so we'll check the penalty here. Stops the clock, 7.39 to play third quarter. The Panthers against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Trying to add some more. This penalty is going to go against Rutgers, I believe. The coaches on the Rutgers side of the field trying to get their defense straightened up in the goal line situation. I think Rutgers agrees with this call? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Lionel Washington doing some talking to the officials. They move it back into the three. Offside is the call, so it is still first down and goal. The ball was at the one, then it went to the six, and now it's at the three, and we still haven't run a play officially. Best way to get around Pitt Stadium today, maybe on a bicycle. I think a boat might be better, too. <laughs> there you go. It is first and goal. Thomas in the slot left. Marino. Washington has him. And he downs him. Interesting set at the goal line. They came out with a pro slot, and Washington wasn't going to be denied. The train just really got after it, was able to beat his, uh, his blocker and get the chores done. That's going to make it a lot tougher for the University of Pittsburgh. Let's watch him again. All right, this is Washington, who's matching up with Tony Brown on his side. And, boy, he just puts the heat on. So Pittsburgh, instead of coming out with the Robus or the power eye, as they had the time before that, comes out with a pro slot. Now they're second and a bunch. Second and about 22. They lost 19 yards on the sack. So now they'll go to the passing formation. Thomas is out. Williams is in. 
three wideouts in the game right now for the University of Pittsburgh. McIntyre, the only running back. Blitz is on, they dump it off. McIntyre has it, some blockers out in front inside the 20. Down to the 15-yard line is Marlon McIntyre. Jim Martello, number 51 for Rutgers, made the tackle. Pitt gets seven yards of that loss back. This Martello's done a very good job, unfortunately, for Rutgers. Dumont went out about the third play of the ball game. Set the screen up pretty good. Washington puts a hard rush on to really set it up for Pittsburgh. Washington playing, of course, for Rutgers. Watch Martella, who's just been very effective the entire ball game after not starting and coming in. That's a good hit. At the 15, it is third down and goal to go. Great drop for Marino. A lot of time. Now he could run the ball if he wants to. He'll try to take it in. Marino is down at the one. That's not what you want when you're Foge Fazio. That's how you lose your franchise. He's okay, but that's not what you want when you're ahead 31 to 3. I'm sure Foge will tell him. Here's Marino as he avoids the rush. Rutgers going only with the three men up front. Very little pressure. Marino can run a little bit, too. He tucks it away right before he gets to the goal line. He's down. The Panthers on fourth and one will go for it. Here's Marino once again. He's got the good size of 6'4", 215. His father drives a truck for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Tied in. You see Collins in the backfield. They'll try some power straight ahead. Collins gives to the tailback. Brian Thomas gets in. Thomas gets the touchdown. Rutgers does not agree, but I believe he did wedge it over in that second surge. Irv. I, I got to agree with you. Sweeney, 53, the guy who's normally a center, did a very good job blocking down as Rutgers was in a 6-5 goal line. Here's another angle. Good surge in there, and very definitely he was across the line. Schubert will attempt the extra point. The offense comes up. Collins, who was lined up in the backfield to help out in the blocking. But it is Brian Thomas scoring his second touchdown. It took him seven plays to go 25 yards, four minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. And kind of bounced it around with the penalties. The extra point tacked on. 4.58 to play in the third quarter. Pitt adds still more to its lead. It's the Panthers 38, the Scarlet Knights 3. Coming up here on ESPN, your total sports network. Probably our best bout on this particular night is Freddie Roach from Las Vegas against Danny Cruz of Los Angeles. It's Thursday, November 25th, Thanksgiving, 9 o'clock in the East, 6 o'clock out on the West Coast for top-ranked boxing. What a great series, sir. Oh, yeah, they really have done a very good job with that. John, we ought to see some other folks now for Pittsburgh, 458 remaining in the third period. I've got to believe that the Panther coaching staff, very uh, concerned about making sure nobody gets hurt. They were able to hold Frelick out today and getting him ready for Penn State. He's got a pinched nerve. Could get Flynn back next week, could get Brown. They don't want to get anybody hurt. It's cold. A lot of people blowing on their hands down there. The temperature's dropping some more. Schubert will kick it off. Hooper is deep. I don't think he's going to return this one. Nope, he won't. So Rutgers is going to get the ball. And Rutgers will get it for only the second time in the third quarter with uh, less than five minutes to play. Pitt got the ball on the kickoff. Took it in for a field goal. This drive, 25 yards, seven plays. Thomas gets the touchdown, his second of the afternoon. On the only possession of this half offensively for Rutgers, Troy Hill intercepted. And Pitt scored again. And after that kickoff, on the kickoff, Rutgers fumbled again. Pitt recovered, took it in for another touchdown. So it is now 38 to 3. And the chance of We Want State begin to build. There's a flag thrown. Looks like a holding penalty on 68 Lamont Green. Let's see if that's the call. Carrying the football that time was Vernon Williams, number 38, who's in at fullback right now. But I believe it's all for naught. They will go back about 10 yards to the 10. So it'll be first down and 20. The 10 yard line. A holding call, 451. If you look around Pitt Stadium right now, there are not very many people left, Irv. Get a good seed right now. <laughs> a cold, rainy afternoon in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A lot of them going up that hill just to the side of us, too. <laughs> 
warmed up a little bit start the tailgate parties take them inside this afternoon. 38 to 3 is the score still plenty of time four minutes and 45 seconds to go third quarter. J.C. Pelosi defensively for the Pitt Panthers. This will be a second down play. The yardage still about the same. It'll be second down and 20. If you're Frank Burns, you're looking at the clock now. You want to get some time on it. Frank knew coming into the ball game it was going to be tough. A lot of personnel on that uh, Panther side. Jack LaFrary is still the quarterback. He'll look to throw on second down long yardage. Does, and it's intercepted. The Panthers have it. Rick Cranach, number 55, a senior from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, picks off his second interception of the year. Cranach, 6'2", 216. His other interception came in the North Carolina game. Let's watch this one. Here it is once again, a very alert Panthers secondary and the backers given underneath coverage. They get the job done right here. They're back on the attack. And they got a new quarterback in. Pitt Panthers will send out Danny Daniels, number seven, a senior from Coriopolis, Pennsylvania. See if there are other changes in that backfield. Stone is in there, and Callahan. Darnell Stone is 46, the tailback with the ball. They bang it forward inside the 20 down to about the 18. Keith Wetzel made the tackle. Panthers with the ball at the 21 to start this series. There is Danny Daniels. Daniels coming into the ball game has not played very much, of course. Also working two freshmen, Darnell Stone from West Elizabeth, PA, and Bill Callahan from New Kensington, PA, as we make some changes in that pit offensive unit. Ball will be at the 17-yard line, second down and six. Williams and Compton are the wide receivers, so the regulars in the key positions are out of there. Straight ahead running by the fullback, the freshman Bill Callahan, tackled by Bob Dumont and Jim Martello. He got inside the 15 yard line a couple of yards on the play third down four clock running three minutes and ten seconds to go third quarter. They're really keeping her on the ground this drive. That's the one thing talking to the Pittsburgh people before the ball game. They wanted it to go on the ground. I was a little surprised that they threw as much as they did. It is third down about four for the Panthers. Callahan. Going to be short of the first down. Short side toss. Beschler did a good job playing defense. Number 65, Beschner is a junior from Staten Island, New York. And let's take a look at it as they try to run a little power again. That's a good job in there by Beschner as he just hangs in there and gets it done. Beschner is number 65, stringing that out. Ball is spotted at the 12. This guy had a great day against William and Mary, 6'2", 245. Once again, a good weightlifter. It is fourth down, a yard to go. Darnell Stone has the ball. He has a first down. He cracks to the 10-yard line. First down for the Pitt Panthers. It's pretty you good looking almost back. see that coming out of the eye formation that time. Pretty good looking back, John. High stepper. Rutgers closes down pretty good, but look at the kid pick up the legs. Good knee action there. Runs pretty good. See the water splashing off the turf, the artificial surface of the Pitt Stadium. Less than two minutes now. You've got to have your foul weather gear, whether you're the camera or the camera person. Herb Brown has his raincoat. Yes. I, of course, forgot mine. I don't believe they can make a first down. They've got to take it in from the tent. The freshman hit. fullback is really ripped as he gets a couple of yards on the play. Coming up quickly on the defense was number 48. And we're trying to find him. We've got some people in the lineup here that we don't have on the card. I believe that's Bachman, the linebacker. He punched the ticket pretty good that time. And it is raining. It's not a lake. That's <laughs> I was looking for the ducks. <laughs> that's the stadium. <laughs> Thank goodness our crew is nice and dry inside the truck to give us these good pictures. 16 first downs for the Panthers, five for Rutgers. The scoreboard tells the story 38 to 3 and the turnovers have really hurt Rutgers. It is second and goal. Callahan still struggling inside the five. With him is Keith Wetzel number 92 but credit the freshman he did a good job on the play. Yeah, he did once again the Utah or the shovel pass. 
I mean, that's pretty good. You get somebody laying his ears back, it's every bit as good as a draw. Here it is again. This is the shovel or the Utah right there. Daniels with the left hand. It's like an option, except you're going forward. Pretty good looking play. Rutgers offensively has run only six plays in the third quarter. Everything else has been the University of Pittsburgh. Look at the job he does to get away from that tackle. There's the touchdown. Another freshman, number 46, Darnell Stone, dancing into the end zone from about the four yard line. Stone scores. So Darnell Stone trots in. Reese, the backup tackle, did a good job caving things in, and Stone picks up the TD. It's 44 to 3, and we still have 11 seconds remaining in the third period. Now the Panthers taking it 31 yards in seven plays. Eric Schubert knocks it right through there once again. 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It is now the University of Pittsburgh 45. The Scarlet Knights, the State University of New Jersey, from Rutgers, 3. 45 to 3 is the score. And we still have plenty of football coming up from Pitt Stadium. 45-3. I tell you, the one thing we kept hearing before the ball game Irv, was that Pittsburgh does not have the killer instinct as far as scoring is concerned. They've had it today. They've gone for the juggler. <laughs> There's no question about it. Of course, they've got Penn State next week. We'll go to the Cotton Bowl. It was either the Cotton Bowl or nothing. They had to win this ball game today, and really was on the line. You know, you come out and kick the can. You're talking about some serious money, a million eight, and they uh, got the job done. Grey Cup championship coming up here on ESPN. It'll be Sunday, November the 28th, one o'clock in the East, ten o'clock on the West Coast. Paul McGuire is going to be there to make sure that you're straight on all those Canadian rules. I know Paul that Paul knows it. those rules. He does, along with a good friend of mine from the Midwest, Fred White. So it'll be great. They have 19 cameras, nine slow mos. Of course, it's a bigger <laughs> field, so I guess you need more cameras. And right? you only have three downs. Right. So <laughs> they could do it that way. <laughs> Presuti is deep, number 44. You know, there were a couple of Rutgers players who missed the bus for the game. Yep. And they're probably glad they did. <laughs> That's right. They didn't get the uh, chance to come. Normally, Eric Schubert's kicks are not returned like that. So the Panthers have scored four times. Starting it off at 12.30 here in the third quarter, a field goal of 29 yards by Eric Schubert. Then Marino to Williams, 10-yard touchdown pass. Brian Thomas, a one-yard touchdown run. Darnell Stone, a four-yard touchdown run. And from a halftime score, the Pitt Panthers have really pushed it up. It was 21-3 at halftime. Pitt scoring all of its points in the first quarter. The only scoring in the second quarter was a field goal by Rutgers. But right now, it's 45-3. We still have 11 seconds in the third quarter. And Rutgers will have the ball for the third time. At the 20 yard line. Fullback running straight ahead is Vernon Williams. Williams, a freshman from Amherst, Massachusetts. He got a couple of yards. That is the end of the third period of play. Rutgers has 300 less yards offense than Pitt. As we go to the fourth quarter, Pitt 45, Rutgers 3. We'll be back. Is the score. We have finished three quarters of play. We get set to go to the fourth quarter. This is John Sanders along with Irv Brown. I wish I could say we were high and dry. We're high, but we're, we're not high. exactly dry. <laughs> As you look down on a soggy Pitt Stadium, second down eight. Ah, oh, they're dancing here because they know they're going to be dancing on the streets of Dallas before long. There is Burke. He has changed jerseys and he fumbles for the second time. The Scarlet Knights recover. Burke has changed from number 34 to number 44. So Burke running the football. He fumbled on a kickoff return earlier and he lost control of this one. It's very, very wet. It's another look as Burke has ran pretty hard all day long. He's competed. Number 90 comes in and gets a piece of him doing a very good job. That's Larry, the defensive end. Hart Larry is 6'3, 225. Third down, 19 at the 11. Look at the third quarter stats. Rutgers with 47 yards in the game. The Pitt Panthers, 347 yards. So we said there's a 300 yard difference in total offense. Baker in motion. La Prairie going deep. 
incomplete. Pass was intended for Baker. He could not hang on. Chris Jellick is now in the lineup defensively for the Panthers. They're playing a lot of folks. You know, we ought to mention a guy who's an All-American here, John. Paul Martha had a great deal to do with settling the NFL strike. And a lot of people really appreciate his efforts as we get ready for this fourth down punt. Liska will kick it. Tough kicking conditions, and he's done a pretty good job. Jellick at about his own 47 running left. Cannot get away from the one man he had to to really set up a good return. But for Rutgers, moving up quickly on the play was Lawrence, number 18. Thirteen minutes and 52 seconds to go. As you can see, a lot of people have headed home. Trying to dry out this afternoon. They were expecting about 50,000 people here. They have never officially announced the crowd. Estimated about 30, but there's about 12 left, it looks like. First and 10 at the 48-yard line of Rutgers. Darnell Stone, the freshman, look at him stay on his feet and get outside. Down to the 40-yard line goes Darnell Stone before he's wrestled down by Bill Houston, number 15, and Houston is slow getting up. Stone has got good size. He's 6'1", 202. He just runs pretty good. Flying around there for Pittsburgh, number 69 is Polanco in for the All-American covert. All new faces for Pitt, still 13-21 remaining. Ball at the 39, it's second down and one. Jeff Casper is in the lineup now. He's a sophomore from Washington, Pennsylvania. As Daniels will throw. Incomplete. Right at the 25-yard line, the pass is incomplete. Intended for Darrell Clark. He's a sophomore from Miami, seeing some playing time. So Casper and Clark now the wide receivers. Callahan and Stone, a pair of freshman running backs. University of Pittsburgh. Pop Warner, a lot of youngsters who played Pop Warner football. This is where Pop Warner coached. It is third and one at the 39. They put Meehan back in the lineup as they go to the double tight end. Callahan, the fullback, trying to pick up that first down as he wedges it toward the 38-yard line. It's going to be very close. We'll unpile. Clock will continue to run with less than 13 minutes now. George Pakel, number 50. A sophomore, brother of Bill Pakel, one of their top interior linemen defensively, made the tackle. And they're still short. Right, Frank? Frank Burns will have a lot of time to regroup. Danny Daniels, a senior, playing in his final game here in Pitt Stadium. I tell you, it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude and something inside a guy to back up a Danny Marino for four years. You That's know? tough. It isn't easy because Daniels had the great uh, credentials coming out of high school. Marino 41 and four now 42 and four in his career. Daniels has hung in there and he's done his job. Fourth down still short yardage again. They go to the fullback. He bobbled it. That's the tailback rather. Stone bobbled the ball as he hit the line of scrimmage. George Pakel made the tackle. I believe that time Darnell got enough for the first down. Fortunately he held on to the ball. Take another look here as they do pick up the first down. Good lead block in here. Number 31 taking on the linebacker is Callahan. He stuck his nose in there pretty good. So Pittsburgh does not punt the football. They keep it alive. 12 10 remaining. They lead 45 to 3. Last year it was 47 to 3. Pitt, this is only the second time these two teams have ever played. Stone and Callahan, a pair of freshmen behind the senior quarterback Daniels, take to the tailback. Daniels will roll right. Trying to outrun the pursuit and look downfield. His pass is incomplete. Actually threw it behind the intended receiver. It's number 88, Jeff Casper, a sophomore. 6'3", 196. And when you're playing behind Julius Dawkins, Dwight Collins, Barry Compton, people like that, you don't get a lot of playing time. Very, very true. That's a tough pattern that uh, Daniels tried to throw to Casper against the grain. Got to believe somebody blew the assignment because normally in that pattern, you've got a guy going laterally with you uh, running an out pattern. And Mike Boyd is now checked into the lineup for the University of Pittsburgh, a junior from Troy, Ohio. He's number 41 as they split the running backs. That's the fullback with it, Bill Callahan. 
tackled by Jim Martello. I tell you, you mentioned Martello a couple times. He's done a good job this afternoon. He's done a very good job. He's 6'2", 215. They really strung it out that time on the right side. Along with Martello, Washington did a good job. And look at them battling. They're pretty good. It's been a rugged afternoon for Rutgers. Just going against people who are bigger and stronger. I was down in West Virginia after West Virginia played Pittsburgh. And those people were just so beat up. All 11 for Pittsburgh tackle you. And they just are very, they're very physical. Clock moving, 11 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the football game, 45 to 3. Pitt putting 21 points on the board in the first quarter has had no problem since then. Short pass is complete to the fullback Callahan. He gets some help from Rutgers, an extra five yards on the play. They had him stacked up at the 35. Man came in from behind Irv and shoved him forward another five. He did. It's, that's that late developing screen, and you really depend on the back to do a good job because the linemen get out there late. You got to cut back against the green. Callahan is able to do this here. He'll cut back against the grain. There's the late developing screen. 76 out doing his job for the Panthers. Here's Reese to back up tackle in for Sweeney. It is fourth and about two and a half for Pittsburgh. Clock rolling with 10 minutes and 34 seconds to play in the game. Mike Boyd is now in a tailback. The fullback is Callahan. Daniels is the quarterback. This is the tailback. Boyd, he gets outside. He could go all the way. With the five. Almost ran out of the room up here, but they finally forced him out. Carl Howard got him at the last minute, saved six. Boy, Boyd showed you some speed there. All it is is a toss sweep, fourth and short. So the defense was in kind of tight. Leading the way is Callahan. Got the ball in the wrong hand, but I'll tell you what, look at the legs there. That's where he gets all that power. He's got big thighs, big calves, runs pretty good until Howard comes over and is able to save a touchdown. Howard had to come all the way from his left cornerback spot. Just outside the five yard line, first and goal for the Panthers. 45 to three. Daniels checking off the line of scrimmage. Pitt had been running everything inside, and all of a sudden they go outside. Daniels pass deflected incomplete. Pretty good rush that time from Rutgers. They broke up the pass play. We got a flag down, too. It looked like uh, Keith Wetzel, the linebacker, tipped the ball. Holding, and it's against Rutgers. So it'll be still first and goal, but the ball will move down to about the two and a half yard line. A rainy afternoon in the city of Pittsburgh on the banks of the Monongahela River. There's there is Jimmy Jim Dumont. Dumont. Well, I tell you, they missed him this afternoon. Well, he's such a tough guy, but you know, there's a lot of tough guys. This guy gives you that inspirational leadership that you need when you're an underdog and going against somebody like Pitt. Guy likes to play the game. Just shaking his head. Chewing tobacco. There's a man. I like that. It's a short day at the <laughs> office. Daniels throws it up. Almost caught. Great effort that time by Jeff Casper. Going toward the corner of the end zone. Could not hang on. Still trying to pick on Young, who's only 5'9". We knew that would be part of the game plan. Here it is, the alley-oop that R.C. Owens made so popular when he was a 49er out of the University of Idaho. And Trying to go over the little guy, and this time, unable to complete it. Good effort. Let's talk about the men up front. Barry Pettyjohn right now is playing the center. John Rees and Mike Dahl are the guards. Tony Brown and Juan Polanco are the tackles. And those are some young men who are getting some needed playing time. Down to about the two-yard line. Jim Martello is right there with number 41, Mike Boyd. It's a shame that Martello is a senior because got to believe Frank Burns is very unhappy today, but very happy with Martello. John, one thing, and, and you've lived here for such a long time, one thing I didn't realize, the rivalry between Penn State and Pittsburgh. It's something else. That's all people talk about around here. It's, well, it's special. They had the banners out before.